My last video on smooth bridges inspired these comments. Many of you wanted an open source solution to making smooth bridges easily. So I built something that does that. First, I should mention that creating a true one-click printing solution is nearly impossible with the tools that we have now. There are far too many confounding variables from the film that you choose to the environment that you print in. Achieving ideal print quality always requires a bit of tuning, but that is part of the fun. With that being said, there is a problem with the approach that I took. When you increase bridge flow, you have the potential to over extrude the bridge lines placed on walls. This can reduce quality around the corners. Yes, we can use modifiers to overcome that, but it never really felt good to me. Creating and placing a modifier on the edge of every bridge is not really fun or scalable. So I went all the way back to the first problem and started over. Increasing bridge flow and slowing everything down does work, but why? It seems to support the idea that normal bridge lines aren't touching. If you stop and ask yourself, what's the easiest way to make them touch, you will probably come up with a new answer. Push the filaments closer together. I did some Googling around and found that Cura has a setting that allows users to do this. It's called Bridge Skin Density. Since the solution was already built into Cura, that's where I started. I ran the simplest test possible, just changing this variable to see what would happen. I set the bridge density from 100% to 140% in steps of 10%. To my surprise, this did not result in something resembling an Italian dish. It created these beautiful, almost blanket-like sheets in the middle of these pieces. Okay, there is some data to build on. Kira has its own drawbacks though, like a UI that is not really that aesthetic. Could I get similar results with a more modern slicer, like Orca? To my surprise, the variable existed. But when you attempted to push the lines closer together by increasing this value, it returned an error message. Why? Probably because slicer devs typically try to place limits to prevent instructions that are physically impossible. For example, going slower than 0 millimeters per second. But as we've seen, the spacing for the bridge lines isn't perfectly calculated. I'm not much of a developer, but I thought, how hard could it be to raise the max of this? So, after some cloning, building, and a single character change, I was in business. I ran an experiment printing the same test piece that I've been using for the last couple of videos from 100% to 120% in steps of 2% with a bridge flow ratio of 1. This was more of a proof of concept or an exploration of what would happen. The results were similar to what I saw in Cura. At that point, I thought, okay. We have a proof of concept, but how do I max out quality and get this to other people? Well, I would have to merge my changes with Orca Slicer. By this time, I had come across a few posts on GitHub and Discord where the devs were discussing my work and how they might implement it. Thankfully, after commenting a few times and exploring ideas, I found that they were very kind and intelligent people and have formed a very awesome community over on Discord. They've spent days and have sent hundreds of messages discussing the ins and outs of the variables relevant to making your bridges the best that they can be. Ian and Emmanuel even ran their own tests with a more complex bridge piece to generate more data. Anyway, after a few days of talking, testing, printing, and coding, we were able to incorporate the features that will allow you to have smoother bridges without the challenges you've seen in previous videos. We are about to dive into the optimization experiments, but it is important to consider that what I'm about to show you is a new tool. And you could use these new settings in some situations, or you could use the slow 1.5 bridge flow trick if that works for you already. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many variables that I have to trust you as an intelligent viewer to explore and find what works best in your situation. So let's get to the tests. To do these more quickly and use less filament, I worked with Critical Printed to design a new test model. I did six iterations to find dimensions that revealed common problems and avoided problems not associated with bridge geometry. With these models, you could run 10 experiments an hour and it will only cost you about 20 grams of filament. You can find a link to the test piece in the description. The general pattern from the density experiment in Orca was that increasing density led to a smoother bridge, but also created the staggered lines that you see at the edge here. I wasn't entirely sure why, so of course I started experimenting. All of these hypotheses that you see were rejected because they failed to do anything significant or even made the print quality worse. Eventually, I generated the following general hypotheses. If the bridge density is increased, then sagging and stringing of the bridge lines decreases. If the bridge flow is increased beyond what is ideal, this will produce staggered bridge ends. If the bridge flow is decreased below the ideal, it will cease to produce interline adhesion 
but will also increase stringing and sagging. These combine to create the data around this idea. There exists an optimal bridge line density and flow rate combination that minimizes edge growth, warping, and stringing while maintaining full interline adhesion. To test this, I set up a density scale at a bridge flow of one for each type of filament. These increased density by 1% for each sample. Bridge speed was 10 millimeters per second. For the first test, I used 10 samples from 105 to 114 then moved the density scale centered down by 2%, increased bridge flow by 0.1, and just used 5 samples. This process was repeated from bridge flow 1 to 1.5. In this way, I created more than 100 samples that demonstrated the ideal bridge flow and density combinations. The ideal, in this case, is the percentage of density when all of the bridge lines adhere to one another, but do not overlap significantly. You can see that much more clearly when placing the samples over a light. The effect is demonstrated here at a bridge flow of 1.1. Keep in mind that the staggered lines are more apparent at higher flows and densities, as you can see here with these 1.4 flow rate samples. As a form of verification, I printed one of the original test models with the ideal settings identified for bridge flow 1.2. The result was a large improvement over previous settings. While I was conducting these tests, I had a friend try to replicate the results. He used a Bamboo A1 Mini and P1S with PLA samples. He found similar results. Johannes actually took it a step further in two ways. He printed off a few samples, cut them one millimeter from the end, and used a microscope to picture what was actually happening. You can see the staggered lines at high bridge flow and density, and the flat orientation at low flows and density. Johannes also captured a close-up of the bridge being printed. This video reveals the origin of the staggered lines. As the lines are printed going towards the bridge, they fall below the last printed line. Then, as the nozzle loops around, it deposits the line going away from the bridge on top of the squished part of the previous line. That's why you only see this effect at the ends. As the nozzle continues, the lines even out and fuse together. So now we know the origin of this artifact is from the squish to free hanging line phenomenon that we've been seeing. But with these experiments, we've been able to minimize that effect. When you chart these results, you will see that for the bridge flows tested, the trend is roughly a negative linear relationship. This is true for PETG, ABS, and PLA. Johannes also pointed out that when you zoom out and try to model all bridge flows, the relationship is much more likely to be parabolic but I chose to constrain my experiments to these bridge flows because I found them to be the most practical. When you reduce bridge flow too much, you end up with other problems beyond the scope of this video. In conclusion, you can test this for yourself by downloading the latest version of Orca Slicer and finding these models here on printables. Thank you for watching.